Welcome, welcome, welcome to Business Strategies and Tips with Lady L. I am your host, Lady L. This is Finish Strong Friday. And my guests and I are going to bring to you today some information that it's going to take you all weekend to chew on. I want to prep you. I want to prepare you. Again, we are here sponsored by the Manet Exchange Group, a book club and social club of like-minded individuals with a powerful magnetic attraction that develops healthy relationships, personal development, and we share wisdom and experiences in generational wealth development and wealth preservation. With that being said, I'm gonna take this opportunity to introduce to you Let's get started. Let's get started. Oh my goodness. You are going, I, I want to let everybody know, please get a pen and paper. Uh, if you're driving, if you're walking, if you're working, you may want to put on a recorder recorder where you can record these notes that you need to take for today. We are going to leave you with a wealth of information that is going to help you set the stage for what you need to prepare in these coming weeks, months, and even year. I'd like to present, introduce, my guest for today. Here on Business Strategies and Tips with Lady L, my guest for today is King William III, the CEO and founder of Holocross Perspectives, Inc., and a crypto godfather of the Magnet Exchange Group. King William III is an ex a strategist extraordinaire, a mentor, a business professor, a coach globally, a motivator, a teacher, a true business man, the king of quotes. He is affectionately known by our King Mr. Trillions as King William III, King Will I Am, and you will often hear him say, and you will definitely hear it today, do what you can, when you can, while you can. I bring to you King William III, one of the godfathers of the Magnet Exchange Group. King William, are you with me? I am. How are you today? Awesome, awesome, awesome. I am so excited. Now, I, I got to put out this disclaimer for my kings. <laughs> my kings know how to dress when they need to dress, okay? <laughs> but this particular king, I call him the GQ of the Magnet Exchange because oh, when Lord. it's time to take care of business, my man be suited and booted. So I said, okay, <laughs> I got to come a little correct today. It's like, no, I'm having King William III on the call today. So I said, no, I got to come a little bit correct, touch up the hair a little bit, do a little face, you know, <laughs> put on a little outfit, put a little on a bling bling. I said, yeah, I got to show out to match my king because truly it is an honor and a privilege. First of all, I want to say to the, Man the kings of the Manic Exchange Group, thank you for taking time out of your mega busy schedule 
to join me on this call this week. Mr. Trillions, who was really on sabbatical, and to him I give honor because honor is due. And I, I tell you to, to take the time out to do that for me. I am humbled and I'm honored, most definitely. Our um, Kemp, Mr. Motivator Satchel of Life Changing Alliances, DB, of our other King of Manic Exchange. I, I they major did not have major alliances. I don't know why major I want to call alliances okay. major, because that because <laughs> sometimes he reverses it. But major alliances and our funds ambassador, I salute you, Kings. I am so grateful that you all have taken the time out of your busy schedules. When I say busy schedules, these Kings operate global businesses. That means when we're sleeping. They, we got a saying, when y'all sleeping, we creeping. But they're not creeping. What they're doing is they're handling business globally. They're on calls with other parts of the world, teaching and training what we get here uh, on a daily basis, Monday through Friday, from 9 to 10, which are life-changing alliances, from 10 to 1130 is our Man in Exchange group. And then even on a Saturday from 12 to 2, we have our Magnet Exchange Group University, which is open to everyone. The, the other calls are too, but that's the introductory call to let you know who we are, what we do, and how we have been called to service the community. And then we even turn around and have a Millionaire's Marketplace Ministry on Sunday. So seven days a week, these kings are pouring out their knowledge, their wisdom, their experiences, because all of them collectively, and correct me if I'm wrong, King, got at least 50, 60 years collectively Collect of business yeah. experience. So I'm not bringing, you know, some half-stepping people to this platform. Even in our queens that are just developing their businesses, they're not slouches in what they're doing as well. We're celebrating one queen who's opened up her first Airbnb in Boston and she's already blowing up the Airbnb world with the, her awards and achievements in, in making that happen. So we're making moves here that are solid, that are secure, that are made with knowledge and applied knowledge and wisdom. So I am plump, pleasing, proud to present <laughs> today my King William the Third. Hello, now, Queen. Thank you. Oh, go ahead. I'm sorry. I now, just we... want to say, okay, <laughs> another disclaimer. We butt in on each other. So y'all have, we're going to be repenting back and forth with each other. Okay. Just, just count it to our head and not our heart. And I say that because that like-minded, that attraction, when you're passionate about something, it, it just oozes out. It comes out. It's not something we got to force. It's not something we got to make up. It's not something that we pretend. We are what we, what you see is what you get. So I'm going to be quiet. I'm going to even mute my mic to help me. So go ahead, King William. Just, just tell us briefly how you came about, definitely how you came about Hall Across Perspectives, Inc. What was the vision? What was the drive that made you turn Call Across Perspectives, Inc. into a legal business entity. Share your journey and take as long as you want. Awesome. Before I even really jump anything, I just want to say thank you very much for all the great things you just said about us and, and me in general. Um, yeah, I, I do like to dress up quite a bit. Not necessarily dress up, but just be professional about my attire. It is Friday. I had a team call last night, which lasted to almost two o'clock in the morning. And I had to get up earlier this morning to do some stuff in Amsterdam. And then we had our team call this morning. So it's Friday. <laughs> it's Friday. So it's, I, it's I, funny. <laughs> it's your dress down day and it's my dress up day. We good. <laughs> Absolutely. But um, our whole our whole goal in the Magnet Exchange Group, it's a uh, group of like-minded individuals who've been attracted through a magnet attraction come together and bring together our expertise to help people traverse through the changing of this financial industry and 
one of the things about it, just to give you a little history, because you asked me to go into a little bit about who I am and where I'm at. I used to be in the IT industry or sector and did some great things. I got hurt in 2008. I had created a nice book of work in real estate. We always were told real estate is going to always be your true asset because when you own land, that's the one thing that true is a true resource of wealth because you can borrow against it. You can leverage it, different things of that magnitude. So I had a nice book of work. I had I was building it. Uh, I had roughly a minimum of seven homes. Five of them were, were rentals. And when 2008 hit with the subprime collapse, it wiped out everything. I went from a nice net worth to being completely negative in the hole. It was so bad. It almost was like I was sitting at a table with a pile of money and I was watching people come by and grab their share. That's <laughs> And so I realized something was wrong and I needed to figure something out. And I did research because I realized that what I was told was good and valid turned out to be a lie. And as I did more and more research, I started coming across people that turned me on to different things. And it's, it's one of those sayings, when the student is ready, the teacher appears. And that's exactly what happened. When I was ready to receive the information, the right people started coming into my life and started turning me on to different nomenclatures of understanding when it came to finances and then also understanding the financial system. The financial system is set up for us to fail. And the average individual doesn't know that. The education system, as you see, is set up for us to fail. You're supposed to go to school, get this great education, come out with the best degree possible, find the best job, working for 40 years, put your funds away and, and for 40 years and retire on your savings. Well, if it was really the true method, why is it a majority of people that go into retirement are coming back into the workforce? Why is it at this moment in time you have major schools being dissolved? When we're talking about universities, the education system is slacking. Not only that, you're hearing we're also in the process of people getting forgiven of their student loans. The world is changing around us. And the average individual still does not see it. So what we did as the Magnet Exchange Group is we came together saying, hey, the world is changing. Capitalize on the change. There's so much that we're trying to get the information out so people can position themselves because. And we're going to share some stuff with you today. <laughs> you have the opportunity to create generational wealth at this exact moment right now. <laughs> See, you're going to see in a minute why we're excited. In spite <laughs> of what you're going to be told today, you're going to see why we are excited because we are the Noahs of today. We are building our arcs for our families. Absolutely. So I have um, a nice little PowerPoint that I'm going to go into and try to give you guys a little bit of history and understanding. And I want to make sure. Oh, sorry. Give me one second. I did the wrong thing. It's going to go window. All right. And do me a favor, please let me know if you can see my screen. Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Okay. I'm sorry. Can you see my screen? Shake your head. Okay. Awesome. And then now I got to go yes. back. <laughs> okay. Uh, okay. All right. So I'm still trying to figure out how to work this. Bear with me. I apologize. Okay. okay. Let me stop share and I'll go back. Okay. I just can't see you when I'm sharing. That's why. Okay. We see you. It's okay. All right. All right. So the Magnet Exchange Group. As we said, it's a like-minded group of individuals which have come together through a magnetic attraction, helping others traverse this world of what we know today 
of the changing of the financial system. So real quickly, these are the people that have come together. And as you've, you've through some of these shows that you've done, you've met our, our leader, which is Craig, King Craig. Now you've met um, Motivator Kemp, but we also have King Gene, King Brian. You've also had an opportunity to talk with King DB. And then here I am right here. We've come together. We have well over, I would say, almost 50 years of knowledge and experience collectively in the financial sector, whether it's dealing with insurance, real estate, businesses. Um, it doesn't matter. We are all coming together. Each one brings an intricate piece to the puzzle to traverse this change. And what is our idea of business? A successful business needs professionalism. Find organizational structure, resources, but a great business requires a great deal of empathy, kindness, integrity, and the scope of welfare. And that's what we believe. And that's what we strive to achieve. And so who are we? I kind of just talked about it. We're a group of seasonal coaching professionals. We all come together. And we're committed to undergirding the communities that we serve, helping other people traverse this space in general. It says, why are we here? because the world is changing yes okay i'm sorry i hear some ticking in the background you're good okay so mm -hmm. we all know that that one percent controls all the wealth okay so we're looking up here and that one percent is the rothschilds okay they created the entire banking system there's an elite group of people if you ever heard of bilderberg group OK, I'm just just naming a few. They sit at the top and they control all aspects of money. Under them is the central banks, which is a bank of international settlements. You got the International Monetary Fund, the World Bank for under there. Then you have your national central banks, That's the European Central Bank, the Federal Reserve, yes. the Bank of England. Under there are corporations. And then you have your government, which sits at the bottom. They write the laws, manage and control the laws. But then here we are at the bottom. All the money goes up and all the control comes down. So let's talk about the dollar itself. If you know anything about history itself, the Federal Reserve is a private bank that is outside of the government's control. They create all the money, or should I say they print all the money. Yeah, they do create all the money, but it's a private bank that controls it. And they were created in 1913. It's a private banking institution and they actually went before Congress five different times under five different names, and it kept getting mm. voted down. Well, when it came up with the name Federal Reserve, it was voted on and accepted. And mm -hmm. now they control all of our money. Now, the thing about it is people don't understand is that the Federal Reserve cannot create money. They can print money and recycle it. But they're changing the laws to give them full access to their entire banking system right now. In 1933, Delano, Franklin Delano Roosevelt made an executive order. And if you notice, there have been more executive orders in the last five to six years than it has been in history. So that's yes. a common term for us at this moment in time, executive mm -hmm. orders. And what's now what's happened is this executive order required everybody to turn in their gold because at one point in time, the dollar was backed by gold. So yes. I would and, and I'll show you in just a second. I have a, a slide to show you what it looks like. Yeah, in we can thank Richard Nixon for that. <laughs> in 1944, Tricky dick. Um, the Bretton Woods <laughs> was established and this is where the American dollar became the reserve currency. Now, what that means is the dollar is used to pay for goods and services. So they handle imports and exports. If a country's trying to buy oil, they have to buy American dollars with their currency and then go and pay for the oil. Same mm -hmm. thing when it comes to gold, medical supplies, uh, war instruments, doesn't matter if it's bombs or if it's even steel to be able to build on your planes and so forth. In 71, Nixon took us off the gold standard because people were, as opposed to them using the dollar and buying the dollar, they were actually cashing in the dollar and trying to get gold. So it was depleting mm -hmm. our reserves. So mm -hmm. Nixon took us off the gold standard and that opened the door for the United States to be able to print money like mad because they had nothing backing it, which kept it regulated. And if you mm -hmm. look, the dollar in 1913 was worth a dollar. And today it's worth about three cents as far as purchasing power. 
That's why, mm-hmm. if you remember back in the day, a Snickers candy bar at one point, I'd say probably about seven to eight years ago, maybe a little longer, you would be able to get one king size Snickers and it was one big, huge candy bar. Mm-hmm. Now, if you look, the price has gone up probably another 15 cents and you get two small size candy bars in that wrapper. Yeah. So that that shows you purchasing power and inflation because the products are going down, but the prices are going up. Okay? Yes. So this is what a gold back dollar look back looked like before 1933. This is a series of 1922. So what happens is I would walk around with this bill. And I would settle my debt or pay for the goods and services I want, give it to the person, the merchant. The merchant has the opportunity, if he wants, or the option to go back to the bank, turn that in, and walk away with a physical gold coin valued at $20. Mm-hmm. Or they could turn around and pass the bill on to someone else. Okay? Mm-hmm. Understand, we are a debt ridden society. The only way we have money yes. flowing through our system is when debt has been established and it's paid. Okay, Mm -hmm. that's why they're doing all these stimulus checks. They're trying to spur the economy to get people to go out and buy things. But the average individual is using that money and saving it. So it's it's not doing anything but bringing us down further and faster. So you're going to start hearing words like recession. Okay, Mm -hmm. (laughs) followed by recession is a depression. Yes, we are headed that way. (laughs) All right. So this is the executive order that um, Franklin Delano Roosevelt it required everybody in 1933 to turn in all gold coins, gold bullion, and gold certificates. And at the bottom it says, criminal penalties for violation of executive order with a $10,000 fine and or up to 10 years in prison. Okay? Or both. Okay? So they mandatorily made everybody turn in their gold. We are at that point again where there is specific coins that they might require people to turn in, but they have to give you fair market value on them. So we don't know. I mean, the, the entire system is changing at an alarming rate. This yes, is the this is what the <laughs> now understand that the banks when they when they went from this bill in 1922 this is mm-hmm. a series but it was in 1933 this is what the bill changed into in 1934 it says this notice for legal tender of all debts public and private and is redeemable in lawful money at the united states treasury and or federal reserve bank the verb is right there says redeemable in lawful money so they're acknowledging it right then and there that mm-hmm. this is not even true money <laughs> now this is what the bill turned into in night in the later say after in the um, later series so all the verbiage left and it just says this notice legal tender for all debts public and private what it means yes. is this is a fiat currency fiat is a latin term means by decree so it means that if someone wants to pay for services rendered or debt by law you have to accept this bill mm-hmm. that's the only reason why the money flows the way it does. Now, the problem yes. is the misconception that we have is that we were told that money is money is um, the conception that we have is money is tangible. Money is just a mm-hmm. construct. Anything can be money as long as a group of people in that social economic structure has agreed upon that as a Pen. as the the way to settle Mm -hmm. all debts in that group Mm -hmm. through history salt has been currency the roman soldiers were paid with salt that's where the term salary comes from so when you go in and ask for a job and you find out what they're willing to pay you they're willing to to give you salt over a year based upon Mm. its salary understand the history of what we do and how the systems run. No wonder we have high blood pressure. <laughs> Absolutely. So, every 70 to 100 years, the reserve currency changes hands. Okay? Each country at this time, if you notice, Portugal ran for 80 years, Spain ran for 110. There always is something that takes place that requires or causes the changing of the guards. Okay, something causes it to become devalued. So if you think about it, Columbus share Columbus came 
over to the Americas in 1642. So Spain ran for 110 years. Right around this realm here, they started devaluing their currency because they flooded the market with the gold and silver that they found in the Americas. Anytime mm -hmm. you deflate the currency, it recalls yes. a regime change because there's too much out there. Same thing applies mm -hmm. here when we come up. The United States is at that precipice now. There's always a generation that lives at the beginning before it all changes, mm -hmm. witnesses the change, and then also on the other side. We are yes. that generation. Yes, we are. We are that generation. Yes, we are. So history books are being written right now it's not always about just the war what else is happening there's so mm -hmm. many things that are going on in the world today yes so uh, this is ben bernanke i'm going to speed this up a little bit because there's a lot of things i can show you and mm -hmm. if there's a direction that i'm going that you you know we want to curtail or if you have questions please ask okay so this is ben bernanke in november of 21 november 21st of 2002 he turned around and said the U.S. government has a technology called the printing press, or today it's electronic equivalent. It allows uh, that allows it to produce as many dollars as it wishes at no cost. This is what he said in 2002. He became the Federal Reserve chairman in 2006. So four years later, they gave him the power and he ran for eight years and was able to print money like Matt. He knew what he had. Mm -hmm. OK, so this young lady right here, I'm sorry. This is now, um if ahead. you if you are sharing screen, we need to see the slides. We're not seeing the slides move. Oh, you're not? I'm sorry. Uh -uh. Okay. So go to the young lady you're introducing us to. Okay. Okay, you came off because I'm not okay. seeing your screen share. Yeah. Okay. This is Yeah, some of these. Yeah, so bear with me. Do you see a black screen? Yes, sir. Okay. Do you see her now? Yes, we do. Okay. So this is Jelena McWilliams. She used to be the Fed chair or the chairman for the FDIC. Now we always know that the FDIC supposedly insures our money. Yes. Okay, because at one point in time you were insured up to a hundred thousand well there was a run on a bank in 2008 anybody remember the terms what the bank's washington mutual or mm -hmm. um, countrywide when they went down there was a line outside the banks people yes, were rushing to was. get their money out so what they did was in order to stop it they increased what they were insuring on each account from a hundred thousand to two hundred and fifty thousand mm -hmm. well within the last 10 years they've been making some drastic changes this came out about about two years ago and this is just a quick little verbiage from the fdic and here's what she says we're not hearing her but we do see the uh okay words underneath her okay I think a lot of it has to do with the headsets that I got on. Yeah, I think it does. Just going to add that to my list. Man, come next week, we're going to be fly on this. <laughs> I think I'm okay for five days. Oh, sorry. I didn't realize that. Okay. That's okay. The last thing you should be doing is pulling your money out of the banks now, thinking that it's going to be safer someplace else. You don't want to be walking around with large wads of money and certainly don't want hoarding money under your mattress. It didn't pan out for so many people and we will tell you this. Okay. Since 1933, no depositor has ever lost a penny of FDIC insured funds when the FDIC was created. So if you're talking about having your money in a safe place, please keep it in an FDIC insured bank absolutely so i just wanted to share that real quick because you're seeing it but i'm going to jump to a couple of different slides real quick because we we constantly talk about the money and where it's going well the dollar is eroding right in front of us right now and we're going to talk about hyperinflation real quick because that is coming right behind the recession that we are in now understand 
they had just announced that we are in a recession. And what they're doing to try to fight it is they're raising the interest rates. Mm -hmm. They just raised it three quarters of a basis point, which is roughly 0.75%. And they're going to do it again before the month of July is over. But the true value of, or not the true value, the true interest rate that we're at right now is 8.6%, which is just as high as it was in 1981. It has never been this high mm. since then. And so, so it just says, what causes hyperinflation? Hyperinflation is when the prices of goods and services rises more than 50% in a month. What that means, hypothetically, right now the average individual is paying anywhere between three to five dollars for a loaf of bread hyperinflation is when that loaf of bread costs you 150 dollars. okay so what happens is it starts when a country's government begins printing money to pay for its spending mm -hmm. as the government increases the money supply prices rise as in regular inflation instead of tightening the money to stop the inflation the government keeps printing more with mm -hmm. too much money sloshing around prices skyrocket so that's wow. what hyperinflation is and these are some of the examples of hyperinflation this is a german mark this is 20 million dollar mark german mark um uh, this don't is see a it. one oh you don't see it okay maybe the maybe next one slide okay yeah maybe you probably one. just had to move down to the next slide okay of where you were Okay. Can you see it now? Can you see it now? Yes. Let me okay. fill the screen. All right. Okay. So this is a German $20 million German mark. This right here is $100 trillion Zimbabwe reserve dollar. It's from the Reserve Bank of Zimbabwe. This is... The largest denominated banknote ever released was a Hungarian 100 quintillion, followed by 18 zeros. Hang on, no. Wow. Okay. This is Venezuela. Venezuela, and this is going on right now, guys. Venezuela is the largest oil producing country outside of the Middle East, and their money is kaput. This is with the value of one American dollar to the, the Venezuelan boulevard. Okay. At this moment, as we said, uh oh. <laughs> yes, give me one second. Okay, you probably have to put it on slideshow. Uh, sure. Okay. Do you see it now? Yes. Okay, I'll, I'll see if okay. I can keep it like this and, and we'll run through some stuff, but because okay. um, that might be part of the problem. But this okay. is what one dollar, American dollar, is equivalent to the uh, Venezuelan Boulevard. That's how much money. Those are one hundred dollar um, Venezuelan boulevards. Wow. Okay. So this is actually hyperinflation in Venezuela. So this is the cost of a chicken right now in Venezuela. Wow. Toilet paper and 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 beef. Okay. So wow. this is taking place around the world. There are a number of countries that are completely bankrupt right now. I don't know if you know it or not, but um, Sri Lanka, the country mm -hmm. of Sri Lanka, is completely bankrupt. They announced it to, uh, two days ago, 48 hours ago. They've been, they've been dealing with a crisis for the last 30 days. They had no gas or limited gas, limited natural gas, limited water, wow. and now they're completely bankrupt. Pakistan. Things that we take for granted. Wow. The things we take for granted. Pakistan at this moment is to the point of on the verge of collapse because they're so far in debt that they no one's willing to restructure their debt. The IMF said we've already done enough. We can't help you. Um, mm -hmm. And then also um, I'm drawing a blank on the other country. Ecuador. Ecuador mm -hmm. collapsed. So this is going on across the globe. As we speak, all these countries are on the verge of collapse, and the United States is right behind them. Now, I'm going to jump down to some things because there's I don't want to go into too much detail on a lot of stuff because it's kind of scary. But we're going to talk about transitory real quick because we've yes. heard this. And what it is, it supposedly was a brief duration. It doesn't last long. It's supposed to uh, 
not be here for a long period of time. Well, this is April 28th of 2021. Fed keeps um, rates near zero, says inflation is transitory. OK, mm -hmm. that was April 28th, May 20th. The Fed needs to get real about inflation. This is June 22nd, 2021. Inflation, transitory, or the new normal in a post-pandemic economy. Yes, I want us to talk okay. about the new normal. <laughs> September yes. of 2021. The Fed says inflation is hotter than expected, but it should cool off next year. Okay, so that's September 22nd of 2021. We are in July of 2022. I'm just showing you the progression. Mm -hmm. Okay. October 14th, 2021. What is transitory inflation and when will prices come down? Here we go here. Um, I can't remember what date this was, but this is same line, same in line. And it just says Fed officials see transitory inflation lasting quite a while. Mm -hmm. Okay, we need to talk about transitory inflation. And what does it mean? November, the prices increases aren't permanent, but they may be short lived. They may not be short lived either. So they're mm -hmm. saying, hey, they might not be here for a short period of time, but they're not going to be permanent. <laughs> here we go. November 13th. Inflation. Farewell to transitory. So now it's starting to change. Bye -bye. It went from it's going to be a short period. Now they're saying, well, it might be here a little bit longer. OK, here we go. Even transitory inflation can stick around for a while. This is in November still. The December. What Powell must do after admitting that he was wrong about transitory inflation. inflation. Okay. <laughs> December. What? Yeah. 20, 21 is taught us taught about us. inflation. <laughs> <laughs> so after all of that, we're finally learning this is what it's really called. They yes, just made up it, a new word of transitory because in my lifetime, I've never heard the term transitory. We've even We've either heard of inflation we called it high inflation, but we never called it hyperinflation. So the terminologies change predicated upon what is actually happening. And they're, I won't say they're clueless, but it is a new experience for this generation. You know, from the baby boomers to our present millennials, this is a time span that has never been experienced on this level. We do have history to fall back on research wise, but then we're still in a new territory of where our economy is going to go because it's going to change. It's making a shift. You're going to always hear what's the term I'm hearing lately. Um, reset. Yes. I understand that's the, word. the term you're hearing reset. So yes. have your antennas up when you hear that word. <laughs> this is the new this is the new normal. And if yes. you really think about it, and I gotta give props and accolades to my brother King DB, because he says it best. He says, think about it as if you're playing a video game mm -hmm. and the video game glitches. You have to hit the reset. But when you do that, all the progress that you had it's gone and you have to start over all over all over from ground one and the same mm -hmm. thing is applied to what we're looking at now now also keep in mind that when they took us off the gold standard because nixon said as opposed to us giving you our gold the dollar is just as good because it's backed by gold we will make sure that you get dollars so mm -hmm. everybody hitched their currencies to the Titanic to the of currency, which mm -hmm. is the dollar. So the dollar's going down and it's taking everybody with it because we know what happened to the Titanic. Absolutely. <laughs> they have tours so, if you want to go that deep. <laughs> like, okay. All right, so, so this is the next one. It says, we can retire the term transitory inflation. So he's admitting at this moment in time, it's not transitory, it is here. It is going to now it just keeps going. It's just I mean, this now we're looking at this is January 3rd as U.S. inflation skyrockets. The White House blames monopolies. Economists calls for price controls. This was in January. Guys, we are in July. OK, we are. It has already been acknowledged that we are in a recession when you have two quarters of negative GDP, which is a gross yes. domestic product. 
which we have had because we are in July now. So it's January, February, March is the first quarter. April, May, June. The reports have come in. We have had two negative quarters of growth in our GDP. We are in a recession and it's going to get worse. It is going to get worse. It, it's just insane where this is going. It's just that they're not giving us the information. You're not hearing this on the news. They're not reporting it, and they're shutting. The, they're shuttering the game and giving you something else to focus on. Mm-hmm. If you think about it, we had the Oscars that took place. What came out of that? The slap that was heard around the world. They're overturning Roe versus Wade. People are up in the streets, and I believe me, I don't agree with it. But these are my personal views. I don't believe anybody has the right to tell anybody else what they can do with their body. So I'm gonna leave it right there. Mm -hmm. But that has caused an uproar that gave them some, that gave people something else to focus on while they changed the world around you. Mm -hmm. Understand that a game is being played. What we're talking about is cryptocurrency. Mm -hmm. When you see this code right here, that is an address, okay? Mm -hmm. So it's not, we're going from physical, tangible items in your hand Mm -hmm. Just like this young lady right here. She has money in her hand on the on the in the left hand, but she has her cell phone on the right and she's confused. Which one do I use? And that's exactly what we're looking at at this moment in time. Yes. No one knows. No one understands. And it's just crazy where all this is going. And we're talking about mass adoption at this moment in time. We are so early to this space that majority of people don't even know what's taking place at this moment in time but yes. this will affect everybody around the world even the amish who do not believe in technology if they plan on even remotely purchasing anything in a store when they br- when they dr- drive their wagons into town they will have to migrate into the new technology which is absolutely now that brings me to this question that i want to clarify because I know we, we've had some buzzwords going out there. Some people may have heard, well, okay, what is cryptocurrency? What is DeFi? What is decentralized? What is centralized? And for the benefit of our viewers today and whoever's going to be watching this going forward, which I highly recommend, not as a... Um, promotion or anything of that nature but again we're here to educate and bring awareness it is critically important that you understand the difference between these two worlds i call it because they do operate on different levels but yet there's going to be some type of connectivity and we here at the magnet exchange group what we do is give you the education and give you the resources to be able to make quality decisions on how to operate in the decentralized world and how to operate in the centralized world. And where there's a meeting of those two worlds so that you can function in the world and still have some level of financial independence. Because one is not going to be very friendly to you having your own private way of handling your financial portfolios and we're here to instruct and teach as a matter of fact on our call this morning our king cred gave us a a session of what's getting ready to come up in the month of august that you can take advantage of if you go to magnetexchangegroup.com so that we can educate you on how to operate in the decentralized world, how to operate in the centralized world, and how to prepare where you can be that connectivity, where you can actually be your own bank. Absolutely. Okay, so that's a great, I appreciate you leading me up to that. There's a difference between the cryptocurrencies. Centralized is when it comes from one point, and that's when the government or an entity can control the, the the monetary system. And that is what the government is coming out with, which is coming from the central banks. So each country is coming out with their own version of the digital currency for that country. Mm-hmm. The euro has their own central, their own digital currency. So that that is span across all the countries that are involved in the euro london has theirs 
the United States has theirs that they're working on. And understand that this has all been in progress for over for over the last 14 years. The United States has a program called Project Dunbar, or I'm sorry, Project Hamilton, which Hamilton is on the $10 bill. And they have been working with MIT for the last 14 years. Biden signed an executive order on March 9th of this year to implement a central bank digital currency. But in the statement, he said, we are exploring it. Mm -hmm. misconceptions understand now what happens is when it's coming from the government because it's coming from one central point they have the ability of being able to control it they can control what how much you spend where you spend it how much you receive and if they feel mm -hmm. that you're using it the way they don't want you to prime example they will cut you off <laughs> if, if they feel you're smoking too much they can shut it off from you purchasing cigarettes if they feel that you eat too much, they can limit the amount of food you buy. That's the scary point. If they don't want you to leave your state and you stop at a gas station across the border into another state and you're trying to get gas and your funds don't work. OK, so why we're that's one of the reasons why we are here we're educated people about this space the opportunity is now it's a very small window and it's closing the generational wealth is being made for those who capitalize yes. and jump on the opportunity right now getting into the decentralized world that is the crypto coins that we are that everybody sees and hears about i'm just going to throw out a few because we hear the names ethereum bitcoin etc Okay, I'm just naming those two because those are the big two names a lot of people know about. But mm -hmm. there are many more. There are also coins out there that will be handling cross-border payments for all the government banks. Because you got to remember, imports and exports still have to happen. Yes. Because there, I don't know of many places in the United States that grow a lot of mango. Okay, and that, I'm just using yes. that in context. You know, to be able to supply. Um, same thing with wheat. So and oil so they're they're in order for the transactions of imports and exports to still take place and everything's going digital there has to be something that handles that because there will not be a country that can controls the reserve currency anymore the united states used it as a power tool called sanctions and tariffs and if you mm -hmm. notice that's what was going on with russia so we removed them from our banking system to get them to come into compliance because the war with Ukraine. Well, Russia has turned around and said, well, we don't want to work with your system. We're going to create our own. Mm -hmm. And because we have used it as a power tool, a majority of the countries that are involved in our banking system have said if something else came out that could rival what we have today, they would leave. Mm -hmm. And countries are in the process of leaving the banking system that we know of today so decentralized See, puts the power back into your hands so you yes. can do the things you want to do and have the lifestyle that you want and be able to purchase what you want because when it comes down to it it's all about goods and services passing hands it's not necessarily that you want to hide from the government because of the simple fact we still have taxes we have to pay but how much more control do you have over your life if you can bank outside the system that's trying to control you? Absolutely. That's all it is. Yes. The big banks are locking people out and they're coming in right now. You have a chance to have a piece of for your own. It is up to you to make the decisions necessary so that you can traverse the world that's around you. I hope I answered your question. <laughs> yes, sir. In, in other words, ladies and gentlemen, it's time to build your ark for you and your family. It's time for you to do the due diligence of research, of seeking out accurate information, quality information, information that makes sense, that makes sense to you, and that you are in a position to take advantage of it, to develop it and structure it for your family. Let's get down to some basics. Please, ma'am, please, sir. It is not as expensive as you think it is. And if you've been doing anything health-wise to keep yourself as healthy as possible, please get some insurance. Please 
go into the instruments and make sure that you understand all of the diversity of even investments on an insurance basis. But on our website, the magnetexchangegroup.com, we are able to give you that data to help you make a quality decision and a quality choice to get the education that you need. If you, if you lack money and time, then you need to get some education so that you can get back your time, that you can acquire the finances that you need. It does not take as much as you think it does because this is the great wealth transfer period right now. This is that wealth of the wicked laid up for the righteous transfer that when you get the education and the understanding and all you're getting, get an understanding. When you get an understanding of how the financial realm is moving and shifting and positioning yourself with right information, with right wisdom and knowledge, and applying that wisdom and knowledge, then you can have that sense of security that you are in some level of control over the financial well being for you and your families. And that's why we are here. That's why we are here to share. We're here to give you the information to do the due diligence and the due research. With that being said, King William III, give us one business strategy or tip that you would like to leave with our audience today of, well, how do I get started? Where, where do I go even when I come to Manity Exchange Group? What do I need to ask first? What do I need to inquire about first? To just give them an idea of where they would get started if they just have absolutely no clue about what they need to be doing at this point. Absolutely. Um, so if you go to our website, the first step you want to do is book a consultation. That gives us the opportunity to talk to you, gain an understanding of one, where you sit, how much knowledge do you have, how, you know, your level of assets and resources so that we can tr help you traverse and get you started. That's the first thing. You can't just jump into something and just start swimming. You have to learn yes. how to swim. And our whole goal is to educate the average individual because you're coming into a realm that you don't know much about. We think we know because we hear it on TV, but understanding all the intricate aspects. We have courses, we have Zoom calls, we teach people the basics of the crypto space. We teach you, eventually we do have trading classes that you can sign up for and different things of that. We also, on our website, we do have books that break down cryptocurrency. Yes. Oh, yes. you got to okay, get the books, so. people. The books, will def <laughs> it, the books is, pr when I tell you priceless, because I un understand, and, and, and I want to make sure that we're understanding what, what we're talking about here. When you have people that have taken the time, and I'm talking about years of time and experience to study to experience firsthand the information that they're taking the time to put in the form of a book material. They're giving you priceless wisdom that you may pay this fee for it, but what you're going to yield from it, what it's going to produce for you is ongoing revenue streams for you and your family. We have got to come out of the poverty mentality where we are expecting everything to be given to us, handed to us, and expected to be for free. Ladies and gentlemen, there are people that are on these platforms, people that I will be bringing to the platforms, that they have taken the time to educate themselves so that they can educate you. And long story short, a workman is worthy of his hire. Plain and simple. It's a principle of sowing and reaping. It's a principle of giving out of your abundance. If you're taking the time, and, and please, I'm not knocking, looking beautiful. As you can tell, I love to get dressed when it's time to get dressed. But understand, if I have to choose between developing a portfolio so that one of my grandchildren can go to college debt-free, guess what I'm going to do? I'm going to go back to my t-shirts and my shorts or whatever so that I can make sure I'm setting my children or grandchildren up for a long-term lifestyle that they can live comfortably 
when I am no longer here. And then they can pass that to their children and they can pass that to their children and they can pass that to their children. It is time for people of color especially, but all minorities, do what you have to do, do what you must do. And I'm gonna save the, the real quote for him to wrap our show up when we're ready to wrap up because when you have an opportunity given to you, you need to ask God, what am I to do with this opportunity? You've given this to me in my hand. You've given me this resource. You've given me this education. You've given me this knowledge. Where am I supposed to go with it? What direction am I supposed to go with it? So that you are making strategic moves. You're making strategic actions. You're planning. We've been talking about it for 70 shows. The the priceless value of making sure that you have a strategy in place. King William is always telling us, make sure that you have an entrance plan in your investment portfolio. Make sure you have an exit plan in your investment portfolio because you need to know how to move your money because how money is going to be moved is changing. You see machines all over the place. Remember when the ATM first came out? I'm not using that machine. <laughs> I want my money. I want to write a check. I want my money in my hand. We, you can't beat lines around the bank going into that ATM machine to get your money. We adapted. All we're saying is we are preparing you for the next level to adapt to. It's the same principle. We And after a while, you're not going to be able to write a check because they're not going to be producing anymore. You're going to have to use your cards. We, we talk about the strategy of having something tangible, as King William told us. Gold and silver, all the precious metals is God's money because that's the, the elements that he put in the earth knowing that we were going to need them as a medium of exchange way before we knew that we were going to use them as a medium of exchange. You're going to see, we're going to, well, I've never really stopped bartering, uh, but... You know, there's going to be some value in bartering, but what do you have to barter? Right. Again, you can, mm, I don't know how much you're going to barter with some red bottom shoes or the Gucci bag. I mean, I can't eat that. I can't put a roof over my head with that. But if you're growing something over here and you're growing something over there, that's how I was raised. We had an apple tree, a pear tree in the back. We had... Um, an apricot tree, the lady across the street had a great vineyard and, and we swapped and we were able to can and, and sell and do different things. Even though we, my family were entrepreneurs, but they were also, they had jobs as well. But it, we're going to find out that a lot of these things are going to start blending again. You need to make sure that you have a diversified portfolio of tangible assets that you can put your hands on, that you can exchange that you understand that when we go digital, that everything is going to be a swipe of a card. I mean, even now, you, you, you show your eyes, you show your face. I mean, facial recognitions, everything is going in that zone. It's nothing to fear. It's for us to be equipped. It's for us to be educated. It's for us to prepare as we are adapting to the changes that is happening in our world system for my bible scholars and for those that aren't i highly recommend that you get a very very clear english version of the book of revelations we are in the middle of it we are living it out it is going to come to pass because god's word does not lie he is incapable of lying so it behooves us especially as people of god to equip and prepare our families our communities I highly recommend y'all start talking to your neighbors. I know we, you know, not being a busybody, but sitting down and having a community plan. God forbid if something happens, if you've got family upstate or, you know, up north or on the west coast or wherever, the word of God even says that it's better to be able to go to a neighbor to get what you need right away than to try to think you're going to get something from a family member that lives afar. So we, we really have to bring what we've been learning about God's word and what we've been experiencing in our life history financially 
and don't deceive ourselves. What you what what it is it is what it is. History is his story. It's a story that we tell in each and every country globally about what's going on in your particular country. Because I know this is even going global. So I'm appealing to everyone. Please, ma'am, please, sir, do what you need to do to build your ark for your family so that you and your family will be able to weather the storm, will be able to stay in your boat and float, and not sink like the Titanic. So with that being said, my dear sir, I do have that we can follow you on Facebook, but you can also go to the magnetexchangegroup.com where one of our slogans is each one reach one and then each one teach one. When you learn how to do what you need to do to develop your generational wealth and wealth preservation, please teach somebody else. It's time for us to come out of that crab in the basket mentality that, well, I got mine. You got to get yours on your own bootstrap. We're the only culture that do each other like that. We need to stop, stop. I know we have challenges sometimes in our families. Work it out because we're going to need each other. You're going to need your communities. You're going to need your family. Work out the differences. Never mind the selfishness and the self-centeredness. Let's sit down and be able to reason together and to be able to do what we need to do to weather the storms of this financial market because we can win as long as we stay in the right boat. So with that being said, do you have a parting word for us, King William III? Well, I am. I do. Um, the biggest thing, guys, is through all the things that are coming down the pipe, stay true to yourself. Invest in tangible metals of gold and silver so you have something tangible that's tradable and it's true money because the last thing you want to do is go to this grocery store trying to get something with a bag of a grocery bag of cash to walk out with four to five items. OK, it's not to scare you. It's to prepare you. And the whole premise behind everything is do what you can when you can while you can. That's the key to life. Stop trying to put square pegs in round holes and forcing things to make to fit. If it doesn't fit, move forward and find something else. Yes. That's the key to life. Do what you can, when you can, while you can. And that is it. If you can find that balance, life will be good for you. That's awesome. all I got. I want awesome. to thank you for the time you've afforded me thank today. You, thank you, I bless thank you. you all. Have a beautiful day. Awesome. With that being said, ladies and gentlemen, thank you, thank you, thank you for joining me with Business Strategies and Tips with Lady L. I am your host, Lady L. Follow me on successbeyondstrategies.com. That's my website. If you are looking at developing a business, if you have something that can service your community and you need to write it down and make it plain, then you need to go to my website, Success Beyond Strategies. That's S-T-R-A-T-E-G-Z dot com and fill in your information. Let's have that consultation. Go on the magnetexchangegroup.com. Look at the information and services that are available to you there as well. You can fill out the information there and schedule a consultation so that we can make sure that you are prepared to develop generational wealth and wealth preservation for you and your family. Go to my YouTube channel, like, subscribe, and hit that notification button. It's Lady Vern, L-A-D-Y-V-E-R-N-E. And whatever comes in your feed on that given day, trust me, it's going to be exactly what you need to hear to help you in your business navigation and your business journey. So with that being said, bye-bye for now. Have a fantastic Finish Strong Friday and a successful Saturday. I might have a surprise for you on tomorrow's show. If there is not a show, it's because I am going to be in the lab working with my guests for the next week, preparing them to make sure that they are ready to bring to you the sauce for your ribs. Aha, have a good weekend and don't eat too many of them. Walk people. Remember, y'all know what I always say on a Friday, breathe. We even got a commission from our leader today to take a walk, give your brain a break, and just 
enjoy the moment. We have a challenge. We got to record a two minute video of us doing that. And we do that to encourage one another. That's why it's so important to join a community. You can join us Monday through Friday at 10 a.m. You can go into my platforms and we'll give you the Zoom number. It's 924-039-3360. I'm going to add that to my list of captions here so that you guys can get that Zoom number. And our 9 o'clock call for personal development, that is 404 404- 333-8430. And our Saturday University call, same number, 924-039-3360. And you should be connected to some form of worship on a Sunday. But if you want to hang out with the Magnet Exchange Group from 1 to 3 o'clock, that is still at 924-039-3360. You have no excuse not to know what's going on. When we stand before God, you ain't going to be able to say, well, I didn't know. You got a Bible right here. How valuable is this instrument to you? You have a lot of wealth right here in your hand. Use it. Bye-bye for now. Have a fun, finished, strong Friday.